Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. Today is Tuesday, and it's also the feast of St. Wenceslas. Now, you'll have to go ahead and listen to the sermon uh, today at Mass where we read his hagiography. Hagiography is a fancy word for holy biography. Uh, but, of course, all that's been stuck in my head all morning is that old Christmas carol, Good King Wenceslas went down on the feast of Stephen. So, anyway, now it's in your head. I've given it to you. Uh, anyway, St. Wenceslas Day. And I thought what we do is we take a look at the lesson that's assigned for morning prayer uh, from St. Paul's second letter, to the Thessalonians. Now, Paul obviously wrote two letters. Uh, he wrote one to deal with the issues that were uh, being presented to him, and now he's written once again. Uh, and obviously, the beginning of the letter gives us a hint that they're undergoing some persecutions and some troubles and travails, and Paul is going to be responding to their needs as well in this letter. Uh, and so we, we pick up a uh, second letter of Paul right at the beginning of the letter. Paul, and Silvanus, and Timotheus, unto the church of Thessalonians, and God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you towards each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. Seeing is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels." in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, that they obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from glor the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it starts off with a good one because Paul, it, uh, compared to what he seems like he's kind of annoyed with the church in Corinth and he has to write to them because they keep kind of messing up. Uh, here he's talking right from the beginning of this letter. He's like, we are so excited because God's doing amazing things for your faith is something for us to brag about. Uh, and he says that part of the reason for that is because of persecution and tribulation. Because they are being persecuted, because they are under trial from the people around them, they are actually growing in grace and growing in experience. Now, none of us want tribulation. None of us want trials. None of us want persecution. And yet it has been proven again and again that the church grows when the church is under persecution. What do we mean by that? Well, uh, you know, we know that, that Jesus says that the that, that blessed are those who revile you and persecute you and cast out your name as evil on account of him, right? Uh, because of righteousness, because we are seeking after righteousness, and I sure hope we are, right? Um, the world that does not want righteousness, the world that wants its own selfish desires, its own sinfulness, it wants to justify itself in its own sinful machinations, will persecute those who are trying to be good and godly and holy, right? Not self-righteous, but God's righteousness. And so these sort of tribulations will come. And obviously for the Thessalonians, this is an issue. The, the world around them is trying to persecute them, and yet they are trying to live up to that righteousness that God is calling to. And St. Paul reminds us that the reason we do these things is so that God may be glorified through us, right? So that we can show forth the glory of God. Our persistence in the faith, right? Our joyful persistence, Right? Not complaining, not bellyaching about the, per the persecution, but our actual desire to serve Jesus, to magnify him, and to glorify his holy name, and to do so with joy, even in the face of persecution, will not only glorify God, but it will bring other people to come to know him. 
they will see the love that we have for them and for each other. And that even under the persecutions, that will be an irresistible draw for those who are honestly seeking the truth that is in Jesus Christ. So, so anyway, so that's a little bit of encouragement for today. If you're going through some hard times, if you find yourself uh, perhaps being put aside or shunned because of your Christian faith, or perhaps just struggling with it, that, that in fact we are glorifying God in that struggle as long as we continue to turn to him and to ask him for the grace to be the people he desires us to be. I hope you have a wonderful day. 1215 Holy Communion today, 5 o'clock evening prayer. And God willing, we'll see you in church. God bless you.